This week in Archery 101, we're going to talk about anchors. Hey everybody, welcome to Archery 101. Break here. Alright, this week we're going to talk about anchor points. Right? We're going to cover the difference between an anchor and an anchor point. We're going to show you the different anchor points used and hopefully give you some knowledge so you can make a decision on which one that you should use. Alright everybody, the first thing we're going to cover is an anchor versus an anchor point. In archery, particularly traditional archery, many people think they're one and the same. And I fully understand that. And yes, it is semantics in many ways, but when you start getting technical and you're breaking things down like we tend to do too much of, guilty as charged, it is important, all right? And there is a difference. And knowing that might help you to become a better archer. And the best way to illustrate what an anchor is, is to ask you a simple question. What does an anchor do on a boat or a ship? Right? What does it do? It holds the ship in place. They drop the anchor so the ship stays in place and it doesn't float away. Well, it's pretty much the same in archery. Right? In archery, our anchor is some people call it bone on bone, other people call it skeletal alignment. And but what that is is you're allowing the structure of your body to hold all that weight instead of your muscles. That's your anchor. So when you draw, you get to that point where you can hold it. Now you're anchored, right? You're anchored, you're holding in place, one way to look at it. So what is your anchor point? Well, your anchor point is where your hand ends up once you hit your anchor, all right? See, they're, they're the same, but different. All right, everybody, now that we know what an anchor and an anchor point is, our next question is, what's the purpose of your anchor point? Well, pretty simple. For most people, vast majority of us trad archers, it's to provide a consistent draw length. Now I'm going to have to give a kavat. Um, just because you have an anchor point doesn't automatically mean you're going to have a consistent draw length. You know, what it really does is get you in there. And to demonstrate that, I have an arrow with a piece of tape on it. I'm going to switch over to this side. Right? We're going to draw it. And I'm going to hit my anchor point and I'm going to show you how it can actually vary by a good amount. So while I'm here, I'm at my anchor point. Here's my squeeze. That's a collapse. I'm here, I collapse. I bring my back elbow in. There it is. That's bringing my hips in. Right? That is relaxing, letting my knuckles fall forward. So you can see, although my hand was at my anchor point, I was still getting that movement of that arrow. And that, that can give you all types of trouble. Now the other thing that having an anchor point does, it makes your form a little more repeatable, which in itself is always a good thing, right? Of all the various types of archery, right? Um, compound, Olympic, bare bow, field, etc. blah, 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 blah. It's in traditional archery, in which the anchor point is without a doubt the most important. Let me explain. Compound archers, they can actually set how far their bow draws. So when they pull it back, that bow doesn't go back no more. It's set. It's mechanically set for them. So that is like ridiculously consistent. As long as they hit that set, it's much easier. Um, Olympic archers use clickers. They get there, they're close, they squeeze, they click, it tells them to let go. That click happens at the same spot all the time. But what about trad archers? What do we got? You're looking at it, we got us. What decides how far it is? What decides when we let go? It's us. We have much more variance in our shot cycles than anybody else. You know, and it shows. Not, not, I'm just honest, all right? I'm not saying good or bad. Any good trad archer, even myself, I got too much variance, but that's okay. I accept it, it is what it is, all right? So that's why having a good, solid, repeatable shot cycle with a comfortable and consistent anchor is a must for traditional archers. 
because it's one less variable that we have to play with. All right. So up next, let's look at the different things that makes a good anchor. Point. <laughs> All right, everybody. What makes a good anchor point? First thing it has to be, and the most important, is it has to be natural and comfortable for you. If it's not natural for you to get to, you got to fidget to get there, play with it to get there, it's not a good anchor point. It's also got to be comfortable. It's got to be somewhere where you can just hit and put your hand and not stress about it. Right? The other one, which is pretty much related to this, it has to be easy to find. You have to just naturally be able to put your hand there. Right? If it's if, where you got your anchor and you you got to think about it, it's not a good anchor point. It's just got to naturally go to that point. The other thing is it has to be precise. Right? Corner of the mouth, which a lot of people use, is precise, but there's a flaw. It can move. So you gotta find one that can be in a precise location every time. And the final one is that your anchor point has to be repeatable without trying. All right? If you got those, then you have a good anchor point. Up next, we're gonna talk about how do you choose your anchor point. All right, everybody, the next question we have is how do you choose an anchor point? Well, there's basically two ways. You can choose your anchor point or you can determine it. They're the same thing, Greg. Yeah, semantics again. All right? When you choose a an anchor point, you go, this is where I'm gonna put my hand. What do you base that on? All right? When you determine it, you base it on something. So we're gonna go over the first one. Uh, many people choose a body part. It's the easiest, simplest way, because that body part's always there, correct? Um, the most common one is the corner of the mouth. Now, the downside of the corner of the mouth is this. It moves, right? So that anchor point can be here or all the way back there. Um, other people choose different things. They choose between two teeth, a gap in the teeth, or maybe a missing tooth to put their finger in. Much more consistent. Now when you do that, you got to have something that you can feel really well with. And that rules out thick gloves, right? That's why you see a lot of people that do things like that they use tabs and they can use their fingers. So there's something else that you need to take into consideration for that. All right, so those are the basic ones. We're not gonna get too complicated. You're getting the, the drift of things. But the next one is the good one. All right, everybody, the next one is you determine it. And what determines your anchor point is your body. So what you do is just get your bow, right? Hold your bow like you normally do. Put your fingers on it like you normally do. Everything like you normally do, pull till you find a spot where you can hold naturally. It can be here, it might be here, it might be here. But find a spot where you can use your body to hold it, okay? Now, that is the best way to do it because it's your body determining it, not you. It's not an arbitrary decision, it's a place where it is. And a lot of guys <laughs> that do things like that, using their body, that's the ones that have the, what we call uh, unconventional anchor is the best way, all right? Now that we know what the an anchor point is, its purpose, the benefits, and an ideal of the characteristics of it, and how to choose your anchor point, now we're gonna look at some of the different anchor points used out there today. All right, everybody, we're gonna the most common one for traditional archers. One that you're gonna see by a fast margin, corner of the mouth, right? Um, nobody knows when it was really adapted. Um, you know, you can call it whatever you want. Um, I call it the classical method. I don't call it traditional because they weren't using corner of the mouth. The English archers, they'd pull back to the ear. So, you know, whatever. Once again, semantics. Um, corner of the mouth is used by everybody, by enthusiasts, you know, recreational archers, hunters, target archers, everybody. So it's gotta be something good about it if everybody uses it, right? So it's real simple, right? Move in, corner of the mouth, clean my finger off, clean my ear. Just set your stuff up, reach here, draw, and let go. Now, when you do this, you can use two fingers, index or the middle. And why is that important? Well. 
big secret to it all is it gets the arrow closer to the eye. And what that does, it allows your brain to calculate the gaps and all that better. Even if you're shooting instinctive, it helps the mind. All right, if you throw a dart like this, you're gonna throw it better than if you chuck it underhand. Right, because it's closer to your eye. Your mind can figure it out. Remember the, the, the old saying, the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid? Well, keep it by your eye. Keep it simple for your mind to do. Um, you're gonna find out that closer to the eye, just feel a little bit more natural. But what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the difference between the index and the middle finger on it. So, first thing I'm gonna do, we'll shoot split fingered. Don't have a glove on it, but it's all right. Split fingered, watch where the arrow is on my face. I'm gonna go index finger, corner of my mouth. There it is. Okay, see where the arrow is? Now, middle finger, corner of my mouth. Just a little bit higher, right? That's the big one. But now let's do three under index finger. Three under middle finger. All right, so you can see they're getting higher and higher. Now, here's a big one for you, head position. A lot of people like to turn their head into the arrow to get that eye over it, right? And that's why some people can't because they can't their bow because they say they're trying to get their eye over it. That's because they're turning their head in a lot, right? So if I keep my head here, watch what happens. See where it is? Now watch when I turn my head in. You can see that little extra distance, right? Just that slight rotation changed where my anchor point is and gave me a longer draw. So think about that. Is your head pointing the same way every time? Because that's a big one, all right? Now, most people that shoot with the corner of the mouth, the arrow is slightly to the outside of the eye. Hopefully I don't shoot my camera. I think I got some skill. My eye is slightly to the outside of the arrow. See that? Get you in close, there it is. Slightly to the inside of the arrow. My eye's on the inside, just by here. Now, some archers, particularly target archers, like string blur. And what that is, is the string and the arrow line up together. And it helps that archer to do his calculations for like gap shooting and string walking and it makes them a little bit more consistent. So this one, eye on the inside, string blur. You notice with string blur, my head had to be up a little higher. And that's just another thing. What are you doing? Are you doing it the same? High, low, left, right. Play with it. Find out what works best for you. The next anchor is commonly used by those that do Olympic archery. Right, and that's the anchoring under the chin. Now, the, this came about, from what I understand, is due to the distance that they're shooting, 70 or 80 meters, I can't remember which. And if you're shooting split-fingered like this, your point on is about 45, but by dropping their anchor down, it brought the point on closer, so their point on could be around the distance that they're shooting. Right, that's the big reason. It also gives you much more consistency, many anchor points, nose, lips, chin, blah, 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 blah. And those multiple points will make any anchor more consistent. Now, we'll say this right off the bat. <laughs> Under the anchor chin, uh, anchor point, it is not the best way if you're shooting medium range, short range targets, especially with no sights. And even more so if you use an aiming method like GAP. Right? So theirs is pretty simple. Don't mind me, I'm not the best at it. I did do it for about a year. And I did it because a guy said you can't shoot it. And I think you can shoot anything if you do it. And I did it for a year and I got pretty good. If you watch some of my original videos, you'll see where I went over to it. And yeah, it takes a lot of adjustment. And man, the sight picture is just horrible. All right? And that's why I went away from it because I proved my point, shot okay, and then I quit. So I'm here. 
boom. I can do the string blur thing. I, I hit the target. Don't ask me how. Maybe it's like, you know, old age setting in. But the under the chin one, I can feel it here, here, and here, but it just, the air was so far from my mind, from my uh, eyes, my mind just couldn't handle it. All right, gonna go to the next one, which I see a lot, of more, lot more people adopting to use today. All right, everybody, the next one, used by a lot of hunters, especially those that know a little bit about uh, National Shot Cycle, the Olympic archer stuff, it, it's slightly past the mouth. And these are the guys that use a tooth because they're trying to get that full draw and they've realized, you know, this, they were doing this. And then one day they said, hmm, maybe I could just use that tooth right there. And you'll see some pretty big name archers doing this. Same thing as the uh, corner of the mouth. You hear? Just like that. It's real simple, pretty easy. Uh, helps if you're missing a tooth or you got a gap. Like, yeah, like that. All right. It helps doing that. So there's another option for you. You can go slightly back. Remember, this is not a law. All right, there's no written rule. You got to anchor there. There's all different ways to anchor, and that's what I'm trying to get across to you today. Up next, I'm going to show you another one. All right, everybody. The next one, it can be done two ways. Right? One is just the primary point. The second is a secondary point, and that's your cheekbone. Um, I stumbled on this one by watching Joel Turner shoot his thumb ring and he made the comment he loves having that arrow right under his eye. He just loves that picture of it and there's a wasp flying around. Alright, so this one, you're here, just like that. So what's the other way? Well, it's what a lot of guys that shoot string walking do. Right? No, I'm not a string walker, but I'm going to make an exaggerated gap. The arrow's by my cheekbone, my finger's at the corner of my mouth. All right, and that's how they do it. Man, do you hear that funky whack? But it's another one they can do. Some guys go farther back, so the arrow's touching here, and their finger's here, which gives them two points, which is another great way. So something you might want to think about. I personally love the anchor up here. I love that, it's perfect. I get the arrow on my cheekbone, the finger underneath it, and I have a 30 inch draw now because I went found my skeletal alignment for me. That's where it's natural for me right there. That is just natural for me. And I pull them back as far as I can pull back till I hit skeletal alignment. It's pretty dang consistent. Without me even thinking about it. All right, everybody, the next one, it's called the floating anchor point. Um, seen a lot of people do this, definitely in the minority, just like people that shoot off the cheek. And they pretty much base theirs all skeletal alignment bone on bone. What it is, the hand doesn't really touch the face. It's in the same anchor spot, right? So if I went on my natural bone on bone, that's where my hand's going to be. You know what? And it's great for snap shooters. And there's a guy, apologize, I suck at pronunciation of names. Gary Chin, Chine, C H Y N N E. He does it all the time, and the guy shoots pretty dang good, right? He doesn't stress about it. He just sits here and he goes till so he hits his um, skeletal alignment. And he lets go. It works. It works for him. You know what? So it's something else you can look at. All right. Here's some of the ways. Now we're gonna wrap it all up. I'm gonna to preach to you, and I want you to get your butt out there and practice. All right, everybody, in this video, we talked about the difference between an anchor and an anchor point. And that's the biggest thing I want you to take out of this today, is there's two differences. And your anchor point, preferably, should be based off your anchor. And where you do it, don't stress about it. There is no law, all right? Olympic archers will tell you there is, because you can only do it their way, but, they're right, because that is a proven method for the one thing they're doing. It's not the best way for everything. All right? You find out how you like to shoot. Base it off of you. All right? The human body. Yes, we're all very similar. Two eyes, two ears, nose, mouth, hands, feet, and all that. But are your eyes the same distance apart as mine? Is your shoulders as wide as mine? 
I'm bow-legged. Are you? Right? So many factors go into it. So don't try to be a carbon copy of somebody. Experiment. Find out what works for you. If it doesn't work, chuck it. Move on to the next one. Right? And you'll have fun. So find your anchor. Then find your anchor point. And you're going to have fun just like that. All right, boys and girls, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time with an all-new episode of Archery 101.